You just picked up your shiny new M2 Mac Mini, and I covered the basics already in my previous video. But it's time for the next level. The M2 Mac Mini is super hot right now and everyone is talking about the improved performance. People are rushing to YouTube to watch all the info they can. This is how you learn to wisely spend your money. Good on you fine people, that is the best thing to do. In this video, I'm gonna show you the top five next level accessories for your Mac Mini. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you won't miss my next video when I post it. Thank you. Let's start off with a big one. That's what she said. <laughs> I didn't mention this yet, but the speakers on the M2 Mac Mini are just not good. I get it. There's only so much you can do with that form factor, which is why you should change it. I digress. I mean, Apple's done a great job with speakers in their other products, but to really enjoy this machine, you need some good speakers. Now, I've tried many speakers over the year, lots of bass, a little bit of bass, some good mids, a good mix. I I've tried them all. I have a pair that I use now that are seven years old. These are the Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers. I think they've done their job, and I would recommend these to anyone that's looking for studio speakers. I actually started to hear just a little bit of a buzz in the left speaker right before I started making this video. So let me go ahead and give you a quick summary of what I was looking for. I watched a bunch of videos, read a ton of articles, and I was as confused as when I started. I don't know about you, but I kind of like to hear these things and listening to it through your computer just, eh, just doesn't, just doesn't convey it well enough. So I turned to my buddy John Morrison. He knows his stuff about studio monitors and some of the stuff I've seen him review, I mean, way above budget. So I said, what do you got for under 500 that you could suggest? I'm sure most of you know John's channel, and if you're not subbed, let me be the first to open you up to a whole new world. Link in the description. Now keep in mind, I wanted speakers that don't pump up the lows, mids, or highs too much. I want to be able to hear what my videos sound like. There are plenty of epic speakers that give you some really awesome output. Now the pair I decided to go with is the IK Multimedia iLoud, which are reference monitor designed specifically for home and project studios. Now these retail for $349, but I bought them at $349, saw them go on sale for $249, and I returned those suckers, and I went ahead and got the ones for $249. Amazon, that's why I use it. And it's gone. Now I've been using these for a few days and I gotta say, I am impressed. Great recommendation. These things sound amazing. Now you do have a little bit of control to bring up the highs and lows if you want. I'm not much of a technical person when it comes to speakers, but I feel like I have a pretty good ear to enjoy quality sounding speakers. Now if you wanna save a little bit of money and get some good inexpensive speakers, there's the Z407 2.1 Bluetooth speakers with a subwoofer. Now he's not paying me to say this, but John did do a video that featured these, and he really liked the way that they performed. I'll go ahead and link that video down below. You should check it out after this video if you're in the market for inexpensive quality speakers. Now these do retail for $119, and sometimes they will go on sale and whatnot, so just keep an eye out. Now Logitech has a ton of other speakers for less money if you're looking to save even more money. Of course, there are more expensive speakers as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and hit me up down below. For the next one, oddly enough, someone asked me the other day, do I have a suggestion for a good webcam? Now, many monitors come with them and, and people use them out of necessity, but they're not always the best, so I have a couple of ideas. Starting off with a beast of a camera that I've seen in action, the Insta360. This little beast may be $299, but when you see it in action, you'll know why. My buddy Michael Fire Jr. did a full review on these. I'll go ahead and leave that link down in the description. The amount of features on this thing is absolutely insane. Now, there are a ton of options out there when it comes 
to webcams. But I gotta tell you, the only company that I recommend to anyone is Logitech. These guys are not a sponsor, I swear. It's best to start with the features you need. Right off the bat, if you're someone that says, I gotta have 4K and decent audio. The Brio is pretty darn good. The audio is, is a bit quiet for my taste from what I've seen. Then again, I don't normally use the mic from these cameras either. I have used the Logitech C920X HD Pro. These names can be long sometimes. When I first got it, it was well over $100. It's now 60 bucks. It's 1080p and it gives you a great image and you actually can adjust it if you need to. The most important thing with most webcams is that you have good lighting. Lighting, 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 lighting down here below. I, I've, accent lighting, lighting up there. Y you need lighting. If you do that, you'll usually look pretty good. Now, the audio is okay on most of these and it will get you by for what you want, but if you wanna look for something better, you should definitely get an external mic. The one that I have used on occasion is the Audio-Technica AT2020. It's a great mic and actually it's around for 80 bucks right now. Yes, it's an XLR, so you would need to run it through a processor. If you don't feel like dealing with any of that, they do have a USB version, and that's called the AT2020 USB. As of this video, it retails for $68. Used to be a lot more. However, it does seem like that it might be discontinued. I saw that on a couple of sites. If you really want one, I, I wouldn't wait. Okay, look, if that's not good enough for you, you could always hook up your mirrorless or DSLR camera right to your machine. I used to use my Sony mirrorless camera and the results are exactly what you would expect from something like that. Now, keep in mind, this all depends on what you're using it for, of course. A webcam will work for most people. Now, if I were to do my live stream, I will probably pick up a mirrorless camera because I know the quality on that will be top notch. Since we're on the topic of video and audio, you need headphones to either enhance your experience, play games, edit, or keep the environment around you quiet so you don't bother other people. I'm gonna admit, this is pretty tough because like speakers, this is different for each person. Some people like in-ear, on-ear, or over the ear, or wired versus wireless, noise canceling versus not noise canceling versus noise suppression. Again, it all depends on what you wanna use them for. Now, I've used the Audio-Technica M50X's wired version for years. I like these because the sound is just like my speakers and it's great for audio mixing. Now, they aren't noise canceling, but that's not an issue for me. Now, the basic colors like black and gray retail for about 170. Now, sometimes those are discounted, so keep an eye out. Now, of course, I had to get the orange and black version, and for some reason, they're way overpriced on Amazon. 274 bucks? Get the f out of here. I bought them for $170 and I had a $100 gift card. So 70 bucks. Don't spend $274. The wireless ones are only 219 bucks for crying out loud. I'll go ahead and leave a link for those down below. You can take a look at them yourself. Another option is the good old wireless AirPods, which I've seen many people use. They'll work and they will do the job. Now, if you want some better sound, in my opinion, for music and video watching, I highly recommend the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pros. These things are awesome and they only retail for 110 bucks. Sometimes you might catch those on sale as well. There are so many other options out there that I haven't even covered because honestly, I haven't tried them all. Some people love Beats because of the bass. Other great choices which can be more expensive are the Bear Dynamics, which I've tried in the past, Bose, etc. any of those high dollar ones. If you really want an all around look at the best earbuds and headphones, go ahead and check out my buddy El Jefe Reviews. The dude has tried everything link down below. Now, when it comes to the setup, I do tend to go overboard. <laughs> I like everything to be organized. Now, my old desk is an Ikea that lets you hide wires in the drawer towards the back, so that keeps it really clean. I spent a lot of time running everything, even drilling more holes in the desk, just to keep the wires hidden. Now, when I got the M1 Mac Mini, I thought about actually mounting it underneath the desk or behind the monitor. I'm in the process of designing a new desk and I'm definitely going to be looking for my studio mount 
under the desk. I mean, I just want to keep it out of sight. Now, what I found has been promising, but let's be honest, it's pretty simple and they really aren't that expensive at all. Now, when I go ahead and buy mine, I'm definitely going to buy like two or three of them just to see what it looks like when I get it and which one works the best. Now I found mounts that work for under the desk, behind the monitor, on the wall. As far as the design goes, they're pretty much all the same except a bunch of them look like they could scratch your computer. I don't know about you, but that would bother me. Now the one that I found has silicone pads mounted on the sides and the top to keep it from scratching. I'll, I'll go ahead and link that one down below. Now I wouldn't be able to mount mine on the back of the LG monitors because the post is actually where the VESA mount is. So that's not gonna work. Just be careful if that's what you wanna do with your case, make sure your monitor's set up for it. It's not the most glamorous accessory, but it keeps it off your desk and out of sight, out of mind. I also found some stands that hold your Mac Mini vertical on your desk. I found a bunch of these that have ports on them and even has a spot for an SSD on it. But be careful because these aren't set up with super fast ports. So while it looks tempting that it's under a hundred bucks, you get what you pay for. Remember that. Now, if you wanna keep it on your desk and you need space, just get a regular vertical stand. I'll go ahead and link some down below. That they're like under 20 bucks. We have heard it from so many people in reviews talk about there not being enough ports on the base Mac Mini. Yes, I, I complain about that all the time. In my last video, I kept it basic with adding more ports. I'm not holding back. We're gonna talk about some real options. Now, while I like that all-in-one hub that fit nicely under the Mac Mini, it didn't really offer any additional USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports. And hey, while it was nice that it had that extra drive you could put in there, whether it was the 2.5 or the M2, it just had a standard USB hookup, so it really wasn't able to take advantage of the speeds the M2 could could provide if it was through a Thunderbolt 4 port. First up is the Orico 40 gigabits per second M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure USB 4 PCIe 3.0 times 4 USB C aluminum adapter. <sighs> We're just gonna call it the Orico. That's a that's a lot of words. Now I also teamed this up with the OWC Thunderbolt hub. This has three additional Thunderbolt 4 ports, plus a USB-A 3.2, and I currently have both of my 5K monitors hooked up through this as well. This adds ports. <laughs> it also allows me to pull faster read-write speeds than the base Mac Mini SSD. Now, like I've said before, the speeds on the Mac Mini base are plenty fast enough to do most things. The problem comes in when you're low on space and the system has no place to stretch out and work. Now the Orco retails for $169, but it is on sale right now for $125 and the OWC Thunderbolt Hub retails for $149, but it's also on sale for $129 currently. I picked them both up and I'm going to be trying those out and comparing them to this next one. This is the Sonnet Echo Dual NVMe Thunderbolt Dock. Little bit shorter of a name, but if I really put on there everything that it has, it would be a long ass name. This one has it all. Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabits per second output to your machine. It has two NVMe SSD sockets, four 10 gigabit per second USB charging ports, USB type C and type A ports, a Thunderbolt daisy chain to attach up the five more of these Thunderbolt devices. It also supports one 5K display, and I have two SSDs in it configured to RAID 0. Now this allows for faster read-write speeds. To be honest, I'm not sure why the write speeds are only 1554 on this, but the reads being 2519 is really nice. Maybe my audience knows. Leave a comment down below. A am I doing something wrong? But again, these speeds are plenty fast enough for all of your needs, and you get all of these extra ports in one. Now, this does retail for $249. I haven't seen it go on sale yet. Now, I also wanted to highlight a dock I've used in the past, and this is from a company called CalDigit. The one that I had used was a Thunderbolt 3 version. It's pre-Thunderbolt 4, but they do have a Thunderbolt 4 version out, and oh my God, are you sitting down for this? This has micro SD, regular SD card slots, 
audio jack, five USB-A 3.2 ports, three USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second. One can charge 20 watts while the other two can do 7.5. I'm not done yet. Gigabit ethernet, another audio in and out, display port 1.4, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, 15 watts, and the main Thunderbolt 4 port can charge up to 98 watts. Oh, it also can run a single 8K monitor. Who has an 8K monitor? Anyway, or dual 6K 60 Hertz display. Now this thing is not cheap, retailing for $450, but guess what? It's on sale for $399 right now, so not bad. Now, like I said just a few seconds ago, I used the Thunderbolt 3 version and it was epic. The only thing this thing is missing is an SSD option. Did I miss one that you might use and wanna suggest? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know and on your way down there, you know the deal. Give me a thumbs up. We got a bonus, well, Sort of. The NVMe storage I'm using is from Samsung. It's the two terabyte 970 Evo Plus. Now I got lucky getting this one because apparently there's some newer versions out there, but the Thunderbolt 4 isn't able to utilize its full potential. So to save your money, I learned after I bought mine from a channel that I'm actually subscribed to, Alex Ziskind. He really knows his stuff, and I'm sorry Alex if I butchered your name. I'll go ahead and leave his link down below. Now, the two terabyte version that I got retails for $4.99, but because it's a little bit older, it's on sale for $149, 70% off. If you don't need two terabytes, they're less money as you go down, of course, Amazon link below. Now, if you don't wanna mess with the external DIY drives and want something smaller, less expensive and portable, I totally get it. Go ahead and check out my original video on the essentials that you must have for the Mac Mini right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you won't miss my next video. See ya.